everyone, welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Wendy Yee. Today we're taking a look at this, The Great American Mail Race, a game actually licensed to have the United States Postal Service on it. In fact, at Gen Con, they had a mail truck to advertise it. Did you sit in a mail truck? Because I did. It's very cool. <gasps> you could sit in it? You could sit in a mail truck. What? Pretend you're delivering mail. No, oh I didn't actually sit in it. There was never anyone at the booth when I walked by. I didn't want to just like... I didn't realize this was a children's a museum. Deliver your mail! <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's take a look at how this game plays, and then we'll tell your thoughts. Here's the setup for the Great American Mail Race. Players are each going to have a postal van that they will start in the home city over here. And then there are going to be four cubes out on the board, which represent letters of the different colors here, uh, or maybe even packages, or maybe even fragile packages that players are trying to deliver from the, dest uh, from the starting spot here towards their destination, say, in Boring, Oregon. You're supposed to start with these mailboxes over on the cards. I think that's idiotic, and I would actually just put these out so that people know where the cube is trying to get delivered to. Every player is also going to start with a score pad here, and you get to share a stamp so that as you deliver these things, you can actually stamp right onto the scorecard itself. I'm off because I'm trying to do this on camera. So the game consists of uh, three actions per player's turn. Everyone starts with a bicycle that they can use up to twice to move along these black lines here, or you can use your action points to grab cards that let you move along, say, the brown dotted lines, or maybe even these waterways over here, uh, so that you can move a long distance with a single action. So you have three action points per turn, you can grab any number of cards, and then you can play any number of cards, totaling up to three. So if the blue player grabs the mule as their first action, and now they're going to play cards. They will spend the mule to move along this dotted line up here, and then they're going to use their bicycle one time to move along this solid black path. Now they've picked up the pink cube, and that's their turn. One thing to note is that the transportation cards you pick from are stacked from levels 1 to 3. So in the level 1 you can move a few spaces, maybe fly over a space, or move from train station to train station. In the next round you can move multiple spaces, fly from one airport to any other, and then by level 3 you have a lot of specialty cards like moving across three spaces, which allows you to move across black roads or the brown dotted lines, or even take a rocket to any location from an airport. If players ever uh, move through the space where another player is, if they're holding a package, they can steal the cube and then attempt to make the rest of the delivery themselves. Um, these cubes, once they're delivered, you will stamp off the, the corresponding type. So this is a letter, uh, and so you would stamp the next letter on your score track there. And then you would also collect bonuses for the different regions. This is the, um, this is the Midwest region. So you'd go up here to the corresponding symbol, and you would stamp that off as well. You're going to get bonuses uh, for delivering for the different regions, uh, bonuses for delivering really quickly, or for a, something matching your player color matching the region, or for delivering fragile packages. If you deliver letters, you see that these are the increasing number of points you get. If you deliver parcels, uh, which are these brown-based cards, then you'll get a higher potential number of points, but there are fewer of them. And then postcards, if you ever end, your turn, or end an action in a place where the postcard is, you collect this postcard, say from Ding Dong, you place out the next one, and this is going to go up here to Chicken, Alaska. As you collect postcards, you also will stamp that off. You see they're not worth that many points on their own because they're easier to collect. But if you collect a whole column, you'll get these bonuses here. So uh, that is basically how you're going to play the Great American Mail Race. So ticket to ride. <laughs> not really. But the idea of collecting cards. Sure, cards for... Made me think of that briefly. <laughs> it is a... It is a um, it's a fairly introductory weight kind of, or how do I say that? Oh, it's a very welcoming game. That's the vernacular we use around these parts, right? It's a welcoming game. The, mm -hmm. the con central conceit is pretty simple. Um, and I think that a lot of people would enjoy playing this. What are your thoughts on the, the theming, the components, just this whole package? I like the stamp. I like the stamp a lot. And our daughter liked the stamp. I have a uh, oh, legit stamp. Oh, it's so satisfying. I took, a I took a shower, but you can still see a little bit of the red there from oh, me stamping okay, my hand. Yeah. Oh, did you? I was, well, I needed to show everyone how it worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, okay, well, yes. Are you guys done with the stamp love? The stamp! <laughs> Let me ask you, okay, so there's, there's a, 
theming wise, it's kind of cool. The rules come with a letter and then papers, which unfortunately are not stapled together. Therefore, I was constantly flipping them back and forth <laughs> to look at odd. the rules. Yeah. But cool. I don't know. I. They really leaned they into the theme. They could have stapled it at least or something. I mean, I was <laughs> they like, didn't have come staplers on. back then, okay? So you mentioned theming. My daughter pointed out that it was a little odd to be doing Pony Express and then a plane. Oh, it's super on weird. On the same turn. It's super weird. That's fine. I just That yeah. was pretty funny. Um, I really like that aspect of the game, the different types of movement. It almost brings back, if you played the old game, Elfin Lands or Elfin Roads yes. from Al Moon. It has a bit of that feel to it where you use different transportation to move. And here, it's not that complex. You have roads, boats, trails, and then there's some airplane train cards. That's just cool. Like, you're sitting here trying to think the most effective way to get somewhere, mm -hmm. to do the same day delivery. That's neat. I agree. And I think that it leans into the theme. Those little bonuses that you get are very cool. I, I worked so hard early in one of my, in the first game I played, I played, worked super hard to get a, a same day delivery on like my second cube. And then later in the game, I was able to get lots of same-day deliveries. I was like, oh, I didn't have to stress about it that much. But it felt <laughs> cool to do it. I think that's the thing about this game is that a lot of it feels neat. I like the fact that the, the points kind of ramp up if you do a lot of the same. Mm -hmm. You get big bonuses if you do lots of different types of packages. Focus on the different regions and everything. I really like that the colors reset. And so you always know where you're going to be able to, like, where you always have to get a package to? Is that what it is? To get it from. Get it from. And then a different destination. To there, yeah, the destination changes. I was like, I like that one of them is really stable. Especially because I, this has stealing in it, and I automatically get that feeling of like, oh, I'm not going to like this game. There's going to be something about this I don't enjoy. But the stealing is so minor, and we tended to steal from people when they were right by the pickup location. So like, if I stole a cube from Chris, he had just probably picked it up. And then I deliver it within probably another turn. And then you're already there and you can pick up the next cube. So I felt like because the routes were short enough, it felt like you could just kind of get it done. I don't want to say Wendy's wrong, but oh my word. This game, that, that's the dumbest rule in this game. Really? It, it, and it, I, have two, I have three problems with the game. One is minor. I think there was some, some rules ambiguous, ambiguity about the... Hunter the Hunter balloon, balloon, I remember. And just, there's a few weird things like um, when you put out piles of cards, they, the, the rule book shows you a different way to put them than it tells you to put them. Hmm. And I was confused. On, there's some minor things. It, the rules can be better. My two biggest problem is the game doesn't scale well because you don't change the deck of cards for two to four players. So mm. four players, you are taking half the turns in a two-player game. You're also competing over only four cubes, which you are also competing over in a two-player game. In a two-player game, you're not going to cross paths that much with each other, mm -hmm. which makes the stealing not a big deal in a two-player game. But in a four-player game, it's huge. Because you'll be like, I want to pick up cubes. Chris is holding two cubes. Wendy's holding two cubes. The other two people are like, well, we only can steal. And when you're almost at a location and someone drives up, steals, and goes in that location, that's not fun for most people. I really don't, because that is literally the difference between winning and losing. Sure. I found it to be that big of a deal that I've seen games lost because someone just went and stole. Because when you steal a fragile package, for example, that's a lot of points to, yeah. to deliver that someone else didn't get. And... It also makes no thematic sense. They're like, you're assisting because you're all working together. But we're not we're working not together. It's not a co-op game. Yeah. So I had a big problem with that. Now, I think you could take that out of the game and say you can't steal. But that would really affect the four-player game because then, then I'm sitting there going, one. come on, yeah. deliver. Then you would hoard. Right. And they yeah. should have just... They should have then balanced that. They should have said, there's five cubes out in a four-player game and two cubes out in a two-player game or whatever. Play with one mm. fewer region of the map or something. I mean, that affects my entire opinion of the game. I like the game other than, but I think those two things are bad enough to bring it down. Interesting. We played at two and at three. And so at three-player, it's still, there was always that one extra cube. But you can carry two around. cubes. You can. You can. We didn't, really. But sometimes it works out really well. Sometimes it does, yeah. Right. I, and so we played this with our daughter, and this game is just a, a, a touch above her, her mm -hmm. age grade, wherever. but, you know, at one point I did steal a cube of hers, and she was very upset about it. I, I think that the stealing part is going to be the 
is, you know, does it fit in this game or not? Yeah. But I think that even then you're able to to turn around and then do something different on your turn. So I I thought it was going to be a bigger problem even at a three-player game, but it turned out to be fairly okay. I, I think it just discourages hoarding the two cubes. Where it's least fun is when you have a cube, you're kind of close to the delivery spot, and then someone, boom, 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 comes in. Because it's going to the same spot, too. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. weird. I'm not coming to take it and then going back to mine, so I have to sit there and weigh that. No, I'm like, well, if I can take it, why would I not? I almost, if you're going to have in the game, maybe a card should, you have to play a card to do that, too. Mm. Interesting. Because there was very rarely, because we didn't go around picking up lots of cubes, we kind of just beelined to where we needed to go, that I wouldn't even get close to that delivery spot until I knew that I had enough movement to get there, because I didn't want someone to steal it right before. Yeah. So I just felt like that but was... But sure, then you're sitting there not doing anything. Collecting cards. The collecting future. cards thing's a little weird, too. This is minor stuff, but like the card, they have this whole card that says, hey, you can draw zero cards and then do three actions or draw three. I'm like, no kidding. Thanks. But then three action points you get totaled. two free actions on the bike, but there's no way to denote that. It is just a little bit of nebulous. Sure. Yeah, it, it could feels, be more clear. The game feels slightly clunky. The whole, the whole concept is just clunky. I love how it's supposed to play, and I have fun with it. I mean, I'm saying a lot of negative stuff. I still might give it a six, but I don't know. Maybe I should give it a five because of that, that's, that take that. You know, I'm giving it a five, but that take that. It brings it down for me that much. You wow. heard right here. And it doesn't, it doesn't scale. It, it doesn't scale well. That bothers me. Interesting. Okay. Because the, the, you know, the game runs out when that deck goes out. Mm -hmm. That deck goes out a lot faster in a four-player game. All right, so, you're, so your score then is you're going to be a five. Yeah, officially, yeah. officially. 5.5, 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. there oh, we go. Oh, i got to change the graphic now. I'm splitting Tom. the difference. All right, All right I'm All right. going to give this a seven because, so I didn't feel like the stealing was as bad as I thought it was going to be. I still didn't enjoy it, and I still didn't think that it was fun, uh, but I felt like it was workable and that it wasn't as... Um, it wasn't as, uh, like, ruining of someone. Like, you weren't destroyed if someone stole a cube from you. Um, apparently, you have a different thought than that. But that's fine. Um, but I did enjoy the I did enjoy the route connecting. I loved the different types of cards and the movement that you could get. I appreciate that you could collect a lot of movement. And if everybody just did that, the game would end really quickly. Um, you could collect a lot of movement and then make your decisions and your plans and go. Because logistically, that's what I would do if I did logistics, I would make my plans and then go. I wouldn't just like fly by the seat of my pants. Um, so I, I enjoyed a lot of what was going on there. I do feel like the age range for it makes sense because it is a little bit more advanced for our daughter than um, she's seven than what she's at, but she's able to play it and she was, I think she was figuring it out. And if we had played it more with her after quite a few times, I think she would understand the strategy and I think that she would she would get there with it. So I think it's, I think it's aged appropriately. Okay. So did I give it a score yet? You did. You said a seven. Okay, right? I said seven. So yeah, seven because I totally play it again. I don't think it's amazing, but I totally play it again. I think it's fun. I'm also going to give this one a seven. I find it incredibly charming. I mean, obviously, uh, I find it so charming. The production on it is neat. The way that the the way that you do the movement cards, you know, they they're all I think you said those different. Um, the Pony Express, the train, the airplane, the hot air balloon. The names are hilarious. Love the names. Okay. Yeah. I checked <laughs> half of them. They're all real. Really? Oh, yes. that's right. They're all oh. silly names. They're like Chicken Alaska and... and um... I looked them up because my daughter did not believe that they were real. I was like, let's find out, and they're real. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. The whole, the whole game is very charming. I think that it has a good family setting. I think, like you said, for this setting, for the kind of the target audience, a little bit of that take that makes sense, but we didn't find it devastating in a three-player game. To be fair, I haven't played it with four. So maybe that would be the big hesitation, but I'm still giving this a 7. I have a lot of fun. I find it very charming. So there you go. That's our thoughts on USPS The Great American Mail Race. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Wendy Yee. Have fun stealing packages. Yes. Don't!